And so we're talking about communication. This is a big thing for us as Christians. We're understanding actually the work of Christian life, the, the witness of God into the earth is spoken. Therefore, every man and woman of God needs to be confident to be able to look people in the eye and speak a clear, concise message which they are understanding how to communicate so that people's lives can understand and make choices for themselves. To communicate is different from just talking. Talking, the emphasis is on the talker, and they're opening their mouth and they're making sounds. But where are those sounds going? They could be going anywhere. But a communicator understands that for his message to have an impact, it must go inside the ears of somebody else. And the communicator's mind is toward the hearer, not toward himself. The communicator's mind is always observing the audience. He is not just engrossed in his own self. The communicator understands unless his audience, whether it's one person or a hundred people, Unless this person is listening and engaging, then we are all wasting our time. And so communication is very important. And, and as Christian men and women, we must learn the skill of communication. And we must understand the importance of engaging our words into the ears of other people. And so we looked at preparation. Preparation is everything because the message comes from preparation. If we don't prepare, what message do we have? What conviction can we have? What passion can we have? Because all these things come out of preparation. We know our God. We know God is with us. We know his words are in our mouth. We know the message that he's wanting to bring. And we know that if we bring it in this way, it will hit the mark. That's all about preparation. And so preparation is a continuous thing in our life, and it is a very thorough process when we have a specific task to do. And so communication, bringing a message, these are skills that we have to learn. So I want to just talk for a moment now about presentation. Because preparation is what goes on behind the scenes, but presentation is that which happens in the, in the moment. And presentation can destroy all our preparation if we don't understand there are certain things that will either enhance our message or distract our message. And so I just want to give you just several uh, skills to learn about how to present the message which God has put in your heart. So when you're talking to people, how do we do this message? And so it's quite simple. You know, in the schools, and if you've not been to a school, then this is what we do. We read the books of Timothy, Timothy, and Titus. First Timothy, second Timothy, and Titus. And from these books, we bring a one-minute message. Most Christians, when I say we want a one-minute message, they start to laugh because they seem to conceive it's impossible to bring a message for one minute. What can we possibly say in one minute? And unfortunately, for most, that's true because they've never learned to bring a concise message and they've never understood. It's not about the time. It's about the content. And in actual fact, you can, you can create exactly the same message in one minute that you would take in 30 minutes. You just fashion it differently and you highlight the point you want to make. Remember, there's a goal. There's a goal. So whether it takes you 30 minutes to get to your goal or one minute is irrelevant. The important thing is you hit your goal. And so we teach them to be able to speak in one minute a concise message, one point, one point, one scripture, one minute, 
And the skill is learning to capture their message from the Lord and to bring that message to us in a way that we can understand and hear it and be blessed by it. Communication. And so this is what they have to do. They have one minute. The first thing about communication is that there must be an opening. Now, what is the opening? Or we could call that the introduction. It's the same idea. When you stand before people, you have to say something. You can't just stand up there. You have to stand there and you have to begin to greet the people and begin to engage in them. And remember, we're talking about communication. And so the first thing we're learning to do is when we become before people is that we engage with them. God bless you. Good morning. It's wonderful to be here. And while you're doing that, you're observing the people. Are they paying attention or not? If there is something going on, shall we settle that down? Are we all ready? You know, you see people stand up. There's chaos everywhere. They just begin to talk their message and then they go and sit down. No one's heard a thing. Because why? Because nobody is ever engaged. There's all kinds of distractions happening everywhere. So the opening and the introduction part is to just make that connection and to ensure that the people's ears are able to listen to the message. And so we're observing that. And in the case of our situation, we have one, one minute, so it's just a very brief statement. And we also teach them you need to rehearse that statement. You don't want to get up here and freeze. You know, nerves and standing before people do some very weird things to us. And so we need to practice that. We need to rehearse it. And so even for myself, I will say, good morning, God bless you. It's wonderful to be here. We trust everyone is excited today. Simple statement, come tomorrow. God bless you. Good morning. It's ex exciting to be here. We trust everybody is looking forward to a wonderful day. Come the next day. God bless you. Good morning. It's wonderful to be here. You're all looking fantastic. Let's have a wonderful day together. And so I will rehearse this kind of a thing because as I begin to talk to people, I'm engaging with them. I'm looking at them and we're going to talk about that. We're looking at them, we're engaging with them, we're sensing them, we're feeling them, they're with you, you're with them, and it builds your confidence to be able to get on with your message. You've engaged with your people, your people are engaging with you. This is what the opening part is all about. And so, before we do anything, we come, we have the opening, the, the introduction part of our message. God bless you, good morning. We're going to have a wonderful day together. And then the second thing that I teach them to do is to go to the scripture that they are going to use for their one-minute message. It's very important to get to the scriptures early in your speaking and in your communication. And I'll tell you why. Two reasons. It's good for you because we are here to minister the Word of God. And we don't want to find ourselves distracted talking about all kinds of things. I don't know about you, but I have heard they stand up, they begin to talk, and then they wafty off. They talk about this and that, and all of a sudden 30 minutes is gone. We have had no, not had one scripture. We've had nothing of any cons of substance, and it's just been a storytelling time. And the reason is they got distracted. They didn't stay with a clear pattern of how to prepare your message and communicate it. So the second thing we do is, is, is that we go immediately to the Scriptures. And so, for instance, I'm going to second, say I'm going to 2 Timothy chapter 1. And we're going to verse 7, for instance. And so God bless you. Good morning. It's wonderful to be here. And I'm looking at everybody. I'm seeing that we're engaging. We're going to have a wonderful day together. Praise the Lord. Listen, I want us to turn to 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. This scripture is one that God has ministered to my heart again freshly. And I want to bring it to us this morning to encourage us. And while people are looking up the scripture, 
I'm explaining a little bit about why I've chosen this scripture because the Lord has ministered to, to my heart again and it's fresh and I want to really encourage us this morning by this scripture. And while they're doing, while I'm speaking, they're finding the scripture. Another big problem uh, is it is that we're going to go to this scripture and then we begin to read it and we move on and all the people are still looking through their Bible to try to find it. And by the time they've found it, the minister's finished. It's all done. And so the engagement has been completely distracted by finding the Scripture. And so it's very important to engage in the Scripture. Remember, we are ministers of God's Word. We're not motivational speakers. We're not trying to hype people up. We are ministering the Word of God, heart to heart, into people's lives. And so, the first thing, we have an introduction. God bless you. Good morning. It's a beautiful day. It's good to see everybody. Trust that everyone is happy this morning. Praise the Lord. So we're going to minister this morning from 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. And as I was reading this scripture recently, again, the Lord encouraged me and showed me how he is with us and that we need not be concerned about anything. And as I'm talking, I'm observing. Are we all there? Praise the Lord. Let's read it together. And it's important for people to be reading and engaging in the Word of God together. Unfortunately, we live in a world today where everyone wants to rush through things and get it all done. But actually, there's no real engaging in the Word of God. So we're going to read it together. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Hallelujah. So God has ministered this word to me fresh this morning, and I just want to encourage you. And so we're bringing the scripture, and then we're bringing a message. Just one point. Just a one-point message. As I was reading this, the Lord reminded me that we don't have to fear anything. Our God is God. He is over everything. He has ascended on high and he fills everything. And that through, as he ministers through our life and guides our life through this journey that he has prepared for us, we don't have to worry about anything because his power in us is love and power and a sound mind. We don't have to fear anything. We can just live every day in Jesus' name. And so we've made our point. And then finally, we're putting together how we construct our message to be a good communication. The final thing we do is that we have a conclusion. The conclusion really reinforces the message. The conclusion is very important because dealing with human beings, oftentimes, their minds are not focusing into what they're listening to. And so we have to create ways as a communicator to make sure that they get our message. And this is a true thing, and I'll say this to you. People oftentimes only ever hear the beginning and they only ever hear the end. They do not even engage in the middle. Their minds have wandered off. The beginning they hear and the end they hear. And that's why we must be very clear to prepare the beginning and prepare the end so that we make sure that people get our message. I've had students come up and they've stood there just for 15, 20 seconds and they're very nervous and this is their first or second time to speak. But I tell you, they've come, they've said good morning, they've brought a scripture, they've burbled through a short message, and then they've had a conclusion, and then they've sat down. And they're all nervous and a bit embarrassed. They haven't done well. And we begin to look at it, and we say to everybody, did you get the message? What was his message? Oh, his message was this. That's right. Everyone got your message. Why? Because you had a good conclusion. The conclusion reinforces the message. Everybody heard the message. And so, good morning, God bless you, it's good to be here. This morning we're going to talk from 2 
uh, Timothy 1 and verse 7. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and love and a sound mind. Our God, he is God. We don't have to fear anything. We can just walk every day in the confidence that God is with us, making the way. Nothing can come against us. Praise the Lord. And in conclusion, I just want to reinforce again, we don't have to worry about anything. God is with us, and he will cause us to accomplish everything we need to do. God bless you. Sit down. Praise the Lord. We prepare the beginning and we prepare the end. Somebody said, we, we, we have the introduction, we have the scripture, we tell them what we're going to say, we, 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 we tell them what we're going to say, we say it, and then we tell them what we said. So repetition ensures that the message has been communicated. And these are very clear things. What's the point of the message? Well, the point of the message is that we get the message. How should that be done? Well, it doesn't matter as long as we get the message. And we need to be clear. And by having a very engaging opening, a clear passage of Scripture, of course this message could be one, two, three points if, you, if we're going longer, but then we have the conclusion. In conclusion, I want to say this, and it's funny about human nature. As soon as you say the words in conclusion, Everybody wakes up because they oh, wow, it's finished. And so they hear the conclusion. We're talking about communication, remember. Communication is about people getting your message. And so this is the style we're encouraging people as they prepare and give their messages. They engage with the people. They observe them. They have good scripture. Go straight to the Bible because this is the book that we're ministering from. We have a clear message. Of course, it could be one, two, or three points if it's a bigger message. <coughs> and then we have a very clear conclusion. In conclusion, I just want to say, and everyone wakes up, they're all engaged because, whoa, he's finished. Praise the Lord. And they get the message. God bless you. Sit down. Praise the Lord. So simple skills to communicate. Now, I want to just talk to two other things. Eyes and voice. Communication is about eyes, eye to eye. This is how we speak to people. We don't speak to their stomach. We don't speak to their feet. We don't speak to the walls. We don't speak to the roof or the floor. We speak communicating eye to eye. And so we must learn to speak into the eyes of people and to engage people in their eyes. This is a very difficult skill for most people, but we must practice doing it. Something that I found very, very difficult in my early days, but I've had to discipline myself. And now, of course, I understand completely the benefit of being able to look at people right in the eye and being able to talk to them and communicate with them the message that I'm wanting to bring. People know you're talking to them because you're, you're talking right into their eyes. People know you're talking to them because you're eyeballing them. And so communicating eye to eye is essential and we must learn that skill. Oftentimes you see people talking and their heads are down here and here and here. They never engage with the people or they're up here or they're looking at the back wall or they're looking out the window. Clearly, this is not communication. This is just talking because communication requires an eye to eye. We look at people, we engage them in the eyes. This is a skill we must practice. The second thing is the voice. The voice must be easy to be heard. People should not have to strain their ears to hear your message. Your voice must be clear and able to be heard without straining. Your voice should come to the people. The people should not have to come to you. And the general rule with that is that you're speaking to the people at the back of the room. You're making sure that your voice is able to be heard by the people at the back of the room. If they can hear it, then everyone can hear it. So your voice is very important. And if you have to say, can you hear me? 
Is everybody hearing me okay? If you need to do that and everyone goes yes, then praise God. That's good communication. There's no point in talking like this because then nobody can hear you and nobody's going to understand what you're saying. And oftentimes people talk like that. They get up and they start to speak and you seriously cannot hear a word they are saying. Well, this is a pointless exercise. Communication is clearly prepared. It is clearly brought forth. It is eye to eye and it is in a voice which comes to you that you can hear and begin to embrace into your life. And so these are little simple skills we're wanting you to understand as communicators of God's word. Our work is to speak. And I expect that all children of God can look people in the eye, can speak a message that makes sense. They can communicate concise messages that people can hear and be blessed by in Jesus' name. So you must practice, 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 and take every opportunity to bring the Word of God so that your confidence grows and grows and you become an effective communicator for God in Jesus' name. God bless you.